Praise the Lord, everybody. God is so good and truly the Lord's mercy. It endures until the end. In the book of Genesis, going to read in your hearing the 22nd chapter, the 9th through the 11th verse. The Bible says, and they came to a place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Verse 10 says, and Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Verse 11 says, and the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. I've taken for a subject matter he had to live. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for, again, this opportunity to minister your word to your people. Father, I pray that your word go forth in clarity so I bind any distractions. I pray, Father, that you would lead me by your spirit so that your people would be edified, my Lord, and you would be glorified. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of mine heart, God, let it be acceptable. And not only acceptable, let it be pleasing as well. I pray and I ask these things in in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. The book of Genesis tells of a man named Abraham who God selected to be the father of many nations. And, you know, if you study the, his heritage, if you study the heritage of Abraham, you will discover, guess what? That his daddy was an idolater. He worshipped idols, and that account can be found, Joshua spoke about it, in the book of Joshua, the 24th chapter and the 2nd verse. But yet, you know, even though Abraham's daddy wasn't right, you know, God called Abraham. And I said that because that's a word for someone. You know, your mama, your father, and maybe even your children may not be right. But don't let anyone discourage you. You know, don't let anyone stop you from fulfilling the call of God on your life. Because when God calls you, he calls you. Hallelujah. He calls you and you're the one that's going to have to stand before the Lord. So don't let anyone just because, you know, your family may not be right. Your children may not be right, but God looks at you. So that's a word for someone today. And if you think about it, you know, that whole bloodline of Jesus, you know, all the bloodline of Jesus. There were people that should have been, you know, if we go by the world's standards or Pharisee standards, there's a lot of people that would have been disqualified. David would have been disqualified. Abraham would have been disqualified. And Rahab would have been disqualified as well. God has called you. You know, God looks at the heart. Man looks at the outward appearance. But going back to our text, God chose Abraham. And not only did he choose him, I like how, you know, he began to speak to him. He began to talk to Abraham. And I want you to read the book of Genesis in its entirety in your meditation time. But, it, you know, God began to speak with him. He began to instruct him and he began to love on him. And, you know, that's another word right there. You know, love reconciles and love, you know, draws. What did Jesus do? What did the father say in John 3, 16? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And what did the death of our Lord and Savior Jesus do? It reconciled us back to the Father. It drawed us back close to God. Now we can go into ha, the Holy of Holies. Ha, hallelujah. And we can cry our Father because of what Jesus Christ has done. And going back to um, our text in the book of Genesis, 
I'm going to um, direct you to the 17th chapter of Genesis because that's where the Lord began to give a covenant. You know, he began to take their relationship, you know, Abraham's and the Lord's. They began to take the relationship to another level. And he said, you know, by way of this covenant that he was making with Abraham. You know what? He, I like you so much. You know, I'm going to enter into a permanent relationship with you. Read Genesis, the 17th chapter. It tells again of that covenant. And if you read it in your meditation time, you know what you'll discover? You'll discover in that covenant that God told Abraham that he was going to be the father of many nations. He told Abraham he was going to be fruitful. He told Abraham that kings were going to come from him and that God was going to establish that covenant with him. And he also told Abraham, you know, he was going to give him the land of Canaan. He'll give you some stuff that don't even belong to you. And, you know, as a sign, the only thing that he told Abraham to do, you know, as a sign of that covenant, and I want to just um, define a covenant for you real quickly. When um, in, in the Bible, a covenant it in this text, it means an alliance. It means, you know, a pledge. And when you make an alliance with someone, what are you doing? You're joining in union with them. So God was saying, you know, between man and to between God, you know, in that covenant between Abraham, he was playing an alliance with Abraham. They were making a union together. And you know what? The only thing that the Lord told Abraham in the text concerning this covenant, he he told him that, you know, he wanted him to um, circumcise all of the male among him, the male men that were among him. And commentators have stated in reference to circumcising, it's symbolic of purity. And you know what, when you think about that, one cannot help but think of our relationship with the Lord. You know, how because of Jesus, we stand purified before the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, like when um, in the Old Testament, I was thinking about that as well. In the Old Testament, when the death angel was getting ready to go, you know, through that land of Egypt and God had given them instruction to put the blood over their doorpost. So when the death angel passed, Passed by, you know, he would see the blood. Hondo, hey, he would see the blood and he would pass over. The same thing, you know, when we stand before our God, huh? when we stand before the Lord, hallelujah, we're not going to stand in our own strength huh? because we couldn't stand before him, you know, because of our state, you know, because we were born into sin. But when we stand before the Lord because of what Jesus Christ has done, huh? we're going to stand before the Lord, you know, purified because of the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross. You know, the blood where they crucified him, you know, they buried him, but our Savior got up. I'm talking about that one. I'm talking about Jesus who paid the price for our sins. And because he did, we can praise God. God, hallelujah, because of that blood. And you know what? In thinking about the blood and going back to our text and the bloodline, the bloodline had to start, you know, earthly from somewhere. And we can praise God for all of those that were a part of the bloodline of Jesus. You know, Abraham, his son, Isaac, and his son, Jacob, hallelujah. And so all of these are the patriarchs of the Hebrew faith, you know, which brings me back to my text. Where are the